I'm Jessica. And I'm Jessica, and together we are the Wine Mouths. Welcome back to What's in the Bag? Today is our first episode where we're going to dive into one of these six North Carolina wines to celebrate North Carolina Wine Month. Woo! <laughs> Drum roll. We are going to drink the Grove Rosé. Yay! Alright, so first up we're going to be tasting the Grove 2017 Rosé. Get a good pour there. Thank you. You're welcome. We wanted to kick off NC Wine Month with Grove because Grove has a special place in our heart. Yeah. And this rosé, <laughs> so good. Grove is located in Gibsonville, which is right outside of Greensboro. Mm -hmm. it's conveniently located. Mm -hmm. They're in their own AVA. Yeah, called the Hall River Valley AVA. Mm -hmm. The internet says that they've been around since 2002. And they're just really great people. We also have a once a month wine appreciation class there mm -hmm. where we do this. We drink and talk about wine. Yeah. Grove is known for their European varietals. So they'll have a lot of the grapes you're used to, the Cabernets, the Merlots. Mm -hmm. They also have some Italian varietals like Sangiovese. Um, and they do have a couple of hybrids, but they focus mostly, mostly on their they focus mostly on their European varietals. Yeah, which are some of our faves. All right, so let's jump in, shall we? Yeah, see what we smell and taste. Mm. Has very nice acidity. Mm -hmm. Perfect on a hot summer day, because in North Carolina, September is still summer. Yes, absolutely. Today's a perfect rosé day, for example. Mm -hmm. I get some notes of strawberry. Yeah. Some minerality as well. Yeah, maybe some sour cherry. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, it's a great rosé. Very mm -hmm. uh, crisp, well-rounded. Yep. And they Good make choice. this particular rosé out of Sangiovese. Which is an Italian grape. Yes. Or an Italian varietal. So rosé is a fun branch of wine, if you will. It's not white wine. It's not red wine. Mm -hmm. One question we get asked a lot is, what kind of grapes do you make rosé from? And we're here to tell you that there's no such thing as pink grapes to make pink wine. That's a common misconception. And that's okay if you think that, but we are here to tell you that that is not the case. Not the case. Rosés can be made with red or white grapes, most commonly red grapes. Um, some of the most famous rosés are made with Grenache or Sangiovese, mm -hmm. um, Tempranillo. Merlot. Tempranillo is another one. Or, there are three different methods you can use to produce a rosé. So there's um, so there's maceration. And maceration is just allowing the juice to sit on the skin. So when you pick your grapes and you crush them and you put them in a bin, you're just allowing the juice to sit on the grapes, and that's the process mm -hmm. of maceration. Or you're letting the juice sit on the skins. Yes. Yeah, so you let the juice sit on the skins for a little while, and it picks up some of the color from the skins of the grape. Since all grape juice, whether it comes from white grapes or red grapes, all grape juice is clear. Minus one exception, but we won't talk about that right now. Yeah, too much of a deep dive. Um, but letting it sit on the skins for a little while, but to pick up some of the color. Yes, because in the skins there are anthocyanins and that's the color pigmentation. Science! All right, so we've got maceration, which is one method of producing rosé. And the most common. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also saunier, which is a fancy French word that means to bleed. So you would yeah. start like you're making a red wine, but then bleed off some of the grape juice and... Yeah, and the... Saunier method has a double effect in a good way. Right. So when you're making your red wine and you pull out some of the wine for the rosé, you are getting your rosé wine, but you're also concentrating your red wine and making it bolder with less juice on the skins. So yeah. 
messes. You get a better red and a rosé also. And then the last method is just basic blending. So mixing maybe a red wine with a white wine or... Yeah. And you may snuff your nose up at that, but that is a common method in some places, mm -hmm. especially in champagne. So a lot of champagnes do you have just a blend of the white and the yeah. red or pink. So nothing wrong with that. Think of a rosé champagne. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. <laughs> Another question we get often with rosé is, when should I drink my rosé? And the answer is, as close to production as possible. So we yeah. are drinking a 2017 right now, in 2018. That's as soon as you can get, and yeah. it's perfect. Um, rosés aren't meant to age, so you don't want to put a bottle of rosé in your cellar and open it 10 years later. Yeah, it's, it's going to be gonna, bad. Not going to be so great. So... You know, rosés are made for quick turnarounds, so drink your yeah. rosé when you get it. Yeah, and we think rosé time is any time. Obviously, rosé is great on a warm summer day, but it would also pair really nicely with like Thanksgiving dinner, Yes. Thanksgiving breakfast, <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> leftovers. Yeah, um, yeah, so any holiday meal, I don't know, pretty much any time. Can't go rose wrong with all rose. day. A common misconception about rose is that it's sweet. And I think a lot of people see the pink color and think, oh, that's sweet, it's not for me, it's a girly drink. But it's really not. No. Rose can be made in lots of different styles from sweet to dry to sparkling. To sparkling, yeah. That's a great one. I love some sparkling rose. Um, and this one in particular is dry. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's so good. <laughs> so good. And often it's hard to tell by the label if it's going to be sweet or dry. Mm -hmm. um, more often than not, if it's dry, it will say dry. And sometimes if it's sweet, it won't say sweet. So it's a big experiment. Yeah. But, you know, just more excuse to buy a lot of bottles of wine and see what happens. Yeah. Often, too, another thing with rosé is if it's called blush, it's a little bit of an indicator that it may be sweet. Not always, mm -hmm. but blush usually is a sweeter wine. Yeah. So right now in North Carolina, it's we're right in the middle of harvest. And we've noticed that a lot of wineries are already harvesting their rosé grapes. So they're picking Merlot a little bit earlier than they would when they're producing the Merlot for a red wine. Um, what else? Their Sangiovese they're already harvesting um, a little bit earlier. And the reason you harvest the rosé a little bit earlier is because you'll get higher acid. So rosés you want a little more acid than you do yeah. in a red wine so and they're usually lower alcohol content than mm. than red wine yeah but we love rosé i think it's a good gateway wine if you will for maybe if you're a white drinker trying to dabble in reds or vice versa you only really like reds and you want to have a nice warm weather wine mm -hmm. that you're looking for so we would say give rosé a chance and particularly the grove 2017 Sangiovese Rosé. Embrace, Embrace your, your wine, wine mouth. mouth.